Hey, this is YBR back with SnowRunner, and today I want to get a new truck because I'm over here in my Con 39 Marshall, and just down the road, there is a new truck we can get called the Royal BM17. I have no idea what that is, but I want it, and it's going to be mine. So we're going to go ahead and set a little course that'll get us to there, and then along the way, there is also this upgrade. We can go ahead and pop into that upgrade, and then we'll get the Royal BM17. Right now, I'm driving my beautiful... Con 39 Marshall, aka Lil Poker, who has been absolutely amazing for just exploring the terrain, even though apparently I don't have the good engine in it after all. To make it simple, the interface for upgrading the truck doesn't exactly make sense when you first look at it, because you click upgrade engine, and then you have a list of five engines. The top one is highlighted and it has a little icon by it, so you just assume, okay, that must be the one that's installed, right? Well, no, it wasn't. That was one you could buy. The one that's installed is the one that's right in the middle of the list, dead center. Why would that one be the one that's installed by default and not like the one at the top or the bottom or something? I have absolutely no clue. So that's why we have the wrong engine in this thing, but it really hasn't mattered. Like I've never really felt like, oh, we need more power to get through this area. There've been a few times where I thought, oh, snow tires would be helpful but never extra power, really. I was trying to be a little cheeky there and go around the water. Sort of worked. It worked until we fell into the water anyways and almost rolled over as we almost roll over again. I should probably stop doing this little, I don't want to get wet because I think driving on the dry is faster. But look how fast we're moving. It's not that much faster than the wet. <laughs> oh, well, at least we're going to get to the destination perfectly fine without flipping over, right? Like, I didn't destroy my truck in the process. It's perfectly fine. So here is the upgrade. We just gotta get to it, and there's a car. How did somebody drive like a regular car to here? That dude is an off-roading god. You can find upgrades in the world. They may not apply to your current vehicle, but will be useful for others. Finding an upgrade gives you a copy of it for free and unlocks it in the customization store. Okay. You can check the whole list of applicable vehicles in the upgrade window. You can install upgrades in your garage. All right, so that's cool. We got an engageable all-wheel drive, which is absolutely no help on this vehicle. It already has all-wheel drive, except it's full-time all-wheel drive. Just no matter what, all the time, it is in all-wheel drive mode, which is great because when you give me the option to enable and disable all-wheel drive, I enable it once and I keep it enabled forever. That's just the way I do it because I do not fear running out of fuel. I will consume fuel at amazing rates to make sure I can get the best off-roading capabilities possible. And if you look through the bushes right there, you can see the truck we're trying to get. And he looks pretty beefy, actually. He's gotta try to climb this hill, and there it is, new truck discovered, Royal BM17. So let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. All right, so what is the Royal BM17? It's that, and boy, it is in bad condition here. The engine and transmission are about to blow. The suspension, not that much better. And also, it has a low fuel tank. So, how well does this thing even drive? Oh my goodness, it has a flamethrower. <laughs> oh, that's great. Hold on, we gotta put all-wheel drive on to get out of here, it looks like. Oh, even with all-wheel drive. Oh, what the heck, it's in neutral? How did that happen? Is the transmission so bad this thing's actually slipping into neutral? Like, there's no way I'm gonna drive this thing out of here, but I could recover it to my garage. Oh yeah, it's actually slipping into neutral. You see that? I did not change into neutral. So yeah, this truck is in terrible condition. It uses like 20 liters a minute, so we can only drive it for like two and a half minutes before we run out of fuel. And that's ignoring the fact that it keeps slipping into neutral all the time. Oh goodness, this thing does not have a snorkel. This is not the way to go, and it's back into neutral for itself. Oh, come on, go to reverse. There you go. Didn't even want to hold reverse. Oh, no, we damaged in the engine. Flamethrower going to die. That's okay. We were going to recover it anyway, so it really doesn't matter if it dies here because we can't go that far. The way this thing is consuming fuel and stuff, we could go like a couple hundred feet anyways before something terrible happens. So this thing's broken. It really doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and recover it. And I want to see, does it only do the flamethrower when it's damaged? That's what I must know. And for some reason, I can't leave garage. Huh, strange. Let me uh, try to figure out what's going on and I'll be back. 
Well, I have no idea what that was about. I restarted the game and I could leave whenever I want. So it was just some sort of strange glitch, I guess. And before we drive this guy, real quickly, can we give it a different paint job? Because I want to see what paint jobs are available. And there's text in the way. Get out of here. I'm illiterate. I want to look at the pretty colors. And I like the multicolor ones the best. So let's see what we got available to us. And out of the options here, actually, I think I like this one the best. Because if you get another color, you notice there's still all these parts that stay looking yellow. So you need a color that goes with that yellow. And the other ones, they don't exactly go with the yellow. This one, though, kind of goes. Although I'm kind of curious now. What if I just made the whole truck yellow? That actually looks pretty good like that or like that. But I like the multicolor one. So we're going to go with this. And then I need to figure out a name for him. He's going to be Big Beige. That's a good one because it's BB, you know? So now... Does it do flamethrower at normal driving? I assume it doesn't. I assume that was just because it was terribly, terribly damaged. Yeah. That is unfortunate. If I want this thing to do its flamethrower stuff, I have to wreck it. This is gonna hurt. Ooh. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep crashing it until it does flamethrowers again because I thought that was awesome, man. I don't care if it means the engine's gonna blow up. Also, look at the fuel consumption now. Remember I was consuming like 20 liters a second when it was in flamethrower mode because the engine's so screwed up? Now it's to a much more reasonable three liters a minute or so when I'm flooring it. I know it really wasn't 20 liters per second. It was 20 liters per minute. But you get what I mean. It was chugging the fuel. Now it's, it's relatively sipping it in comparison. All right, the engine is in red damage. Does that mean flamethrower is here? Doesn't seem like it quite yet. We need to keep wrecking. Nice wall over there. Full speed ahead. We discovered our trailer somehow, and then we crashed. And apparently, we also damaged the transmission just a little bit from doing that. And even though the engine's down to like 25% health or so, still not a flamethrower, but it has to be soon. I'm just worried, how bad is it going to drive once it's actually flamethrowing? Uh-oh. What was that? The engine is stalling, but you... Yes! The flamethrower is here. Everybody, y'all better run because when my engine isn't stalled out, I'm shooting flames. So I have to figure out what you actually do when it stalls out. I think you kind of just tap the throttle and it keeps it alive. And <laughs> we have to do that a lot. Oh my goodness. But look at it shooting flames, man. Totally worth it. You don't need a truck that actually works good if your truck can shoot flames and it can even get a little bit sideways somehow i don't know how we managed to do that when we're barely moving maybe there's just like a little slick spot right there that'll get you oh no we're sliding again maybe it's because i'm always tapping the throttle which gives me great flamethrowers makes it where the engine doesn't stall out but on the downside it makes it have a little less traction come on don't you stall out on me we are almost to where we need to go all the bad news is, is if we actually stop here, it will repair us. Oh, we don't even need to stop. It just repairs us immediately. Okay. Well, the flamethrower is dead. Over here, we have another mission we can pick up. Let's see what it is. Containers in the river. Yeah, I'm going to do that sometime. Don't know if it's going to be now. Don't know if it's going to be later. I don't really have a plan at all, but I'll do it eventually. Before that, though, I got to see what does this guy drive like if he's not doing flamethrower mode because he's so unbelievably damaged we're gonna find out the first thing you might have noticed is it does have full-time all-wheel drive on it because i did not turn on the all-wheel drive it's just been on from the start and i'm pretty sure it only does that if it's full time and ooh, a little bit of damage and i was really close to those rocks you know i'll gladly take just two damage on the suspension that's like nothing in terms of truck capabilities like i see oh that's something Oh, the suspension is completely blown up now. That's not good. You can actually see it's like bouncing around extra now, isn't it? Oh, man, I've really ruined this thing. All right, let's take it home. Am I taking it home? I mean, this is home. We're here. Let's hit recover. Close enough. To actually do some missions, we're going to use the Navistar 5000 MV. Before we do that, though, we got to customize it and see what paint jobs are available. All right, it looks like every single paint job is a camouflage. So he's just going to be called Big Camo, and I'll keep the one it had by default. Although I'm kind of curious, like, what is the interior look like with that great? Oh, <laughs> uh, that is, like, awful. I hate that. You can't see nothing out of this thing. 
Can we do anything about that? Let's see. Customize visuals. Uh, front. This is the factory window mesh. I have to pay $2,000 to remove it. Well, I don't use the interior camera enough to pay that much for it, but you can at least remove it if you wanted to. I don't really think there's anything else we can do. We could get a better engine, but that's way more money than I want. What I would really want is better tires, but again, those tires are locked behind the level upgrade. We can get more suspension, but I don't think that's necessary because if I'm in dirt and mud and snow that requires me to have a suspension that tall, I'm already done for because these tires aren't going to do it. So we're just going to have to hope that's okay. Oh, we probably will want this though, a saddle low so we can attach trailers to it. I don't know if we'd want the high or low though. I know there's a trailer we found somewhere outside. I just don't know what it is. We'll try the low one out and see if that works. And so let's find the trailer that it was talking about. So this thing has all time all wheel drive. So it should be pretty capable even if it doesn't have good tires for the situation. And that trailer is actually just a normal trailer hitch. I think this thing can attach with a normal trailer hitch too. Let's go ahead and see if that works or not. It's telling me it can. Let's see, is it right or is it just messing with me? Attached trailer? All right, that worked great. The trailer is attached and we are ready to do some deliveries. In the last video, a couple of you guys mentioned the place where I managed to flip over my poor innocent little poker is actually the location for a delivery mission that we can do. And the thing we need to repair it is just over here. What is it with this corner? When I'm using the flamethrower, oh, that's not good. Actually, that's okay. You look at the overall damage on the bottom, there's just barely anything. Uh, but when I'm using the flamethrower, I slid there a little bit too. That corner, I guess the hill, maybe a little bit of a slick spot, it just makes it where you're going to slide almost no matter what you're driving, it seems like. So the thing we need to pick up is right here, though. And when we pick it up, we'll also repair the truck. So in the end, that crash did absolutely nothing to slow me down. So we attach the service spare parts. I don't know if we need one or two, but we have two spots on the trailer, so we get two things. Makes sense to me. Just gotta try to do a maneuver here to get the truck spun around. I'm gonna try to do like a nice big sweeping churn, and it should make it. It's gonna be really close. Can it clear it? All right, not bad. Oh, this is gonna be a lot tighter. Nope, not making it. We only need to back it up a little bit. Hey, where'd that tire come from? I want to attach that tire to my truck. That tire is way better than the ones on my truck. So is that other one on the ground there. Oh, see, if I had those tires on my truck, it wouldn't have got damaged there. Again, it doesn't matter, though, because check this out. To exit the area, we got to go through the repair zone, and now we're good as new. It does seem a little cheap to be able to do that. You just plow into things, crash all over the place, and it's like, oh, it's okay, dude. I'll repair your truck for free. Why are you repairing it for free? Shouldn't you be charging me money or something? Because if you put me in a situation like this, I will drive recklessly pretty much all the time. There are going to be tons of repairs and I'm not going to have to pay a dime. It really does change how I drive, knowing the fact that I can wreck it up and I don't have to worry about it. Same for the fact that I can just recover at any time. If I literally flip the truck over, I don't have to bring another truck to fix him up. I just say, oh, I'll just hit recover. And you kind of saw that when I got Big Flamethrower. Yeah, I'm calling him Big Flamethrower now instead of Big Beige because the flamethrower is just my favorite part about it, so that's what he gets named after. But with Big Flamethrower, I would have had to bring a truck with like a repair kit and some fuel to actually get him out of there. I didn't have to care. I was just like, oh, I found him with my little scout guy. Let's just recover him, and I was good to go. Except he doesn't flamethrower anymore, which sucks. Don't get stuck on me. Come on. Through the snow. Let's go. Through the snow. Let's go go we're using a little winch to help me along i mean i know we're gonna make it through actually because we're not stopped as long as we're moving i don't get worried when we get stopped i'm still not worried when i'm stopped and then i can't move for the first five seconds i start to get worried when i'm not moving after 30 seconds oh no things have gone terribly terribly wrong anyways though right up here is the delivery zone and if we deliver this, I'm assuming we're going to get something good. Whoa, that was a weird way to stop. Anyways, I'm going to deliver this and that's going to be the end for this video. Until next time, this is YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know.
I can tell by listening to Big Flamethrower and watching his flames. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. I know this video ended up being a little short. The problem is, if I decided to do something else, it would be really long. And I'd rather it be a little short than really long. Because a little short is still closer to what I want, but really long just means it's way off from target.